Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a 74-year-old patient with a history of difficulty swallowing. And I'll allow you some time to just kind of get an overview of what's happening here. I'll start now at the top, upper thorax, and look at the mediastinum, cardiac structures, liver, spleen, pancreas, adrenal glands, kidneys, aorta, pelvic structures. Okay, so probably what caught your eye is that there are numerous low attenuation lesions in the liver throughout both left and right lobes of the liver replacing much of the volume of the liver. The appearance is very typical of metastatic disease to the liver. It is a fairly extreme example of that. We see this often with colon cancer. Colon cancer will commonly have metastatic lesions to the liver and they may look like this. Sometimes they're referred to as cannonball metastases, big round things like this. Uh, let's see if we see anything in the colon. We'll start the colon. We'll look down here in the right lower quadrant. Here we go in the right lower quadrant. Here you can actually see the appendix, this little curved structure right there coming off the cecum. Here you have terminal ileum coming into the cecum and right colon at the ileocecal valve level. Here again is that little appendix. So if we follow the colon superiorly, we come to the hepatic flexure I don't see any obvious masses here. Now CT is not the optimum, easiest way to evaluate the colon, but it is adequate in most cases. And at this point, this is all we have to, to look at in terms of the colon. So here's the transverse colon. Transverse colon continues toward the left upper quadrant as the splenic flexure. So we've looked at the transverse colon the hepatic flexure and splenic flexure, as well as the right colon, have not seen anything. Follow the colon down along the left colon. That looks unremarkable. Let's look at the sigmoid colon. It turns around here and has a little bit of a sigmoidal configuration, as we would expect. There are multiple metallic uh, surgical clips reflecting prior surgery. Uh, but as much as, as we are able to see of the colon, no obvious, and here, here's part of the sigmoid colon here too, coming into the rectum. So again, following it in the left, from the left colon, we follow it downward, courses over to the right, has this sigmoidal S kind of configuration, courses around here, then connects with the rectum and the rectum all look fine, so no obvious colon carcinoma. What else could be causing that? Well, any bowel lesion could do that. Lung cancer can produce this kind of abnormality. But now let's look at the chest carefully, and let's see if we can look at the esophagus. So here's the airway. Here's a thyroid gland on both sides, the vessels of the superior mediastinum. And here is esophagus, posterior to the trachea. Here's trachea right here. Here is the esophagus. We follow that esophagus inferiorly. Here's the aortic arch. Esophagus looks fine there. It's, it's the soft tissue right in this area right here. That's what we have of the esophagus. Follow that down a little bit farther. Here we have a little air pocket that is the lumen of the esophagus, immediately adjacent to the descending thoracic aorta. 
and that looks fine, no obvious mass there. Now we're getting close to the diaphragmatic hiatus where the esophagus passes through the diaphragm and becomes the stomach. And here is esophagus here. But here we have this relatively low attenuation soft tissue abnormality to the right of the esophagus here right by the gastroesophageal junction, the GE junction, really immediately to the right lateral aspect of the distal thoracic esophagus. So that looks very suspicious. It doesn't look like it's a normal anatomic structure. It doesn't seem to have the low attenuation configuration of a cyst of some sort. Uh, so I think that this is a neoplasm. It's very likely arising from the esophagus. There's really nothing else here that he, it would likely arise from. We don't usually see masses like this arising from the diaphragm. We don't see it arising from the pericardium uh, near the heart region. So I think we have an esophageal carcinoma here that has given us these extensive so-called cannonball metastases uh, occupying much of the volume of the liver. So uh, a fairly dramatic example of gastrointestinal cancer producing cannonball metastases, m multiple large metastases in the liver. I don't see any retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy. We want to look back here. Here we see the pancreas. We see the spleen. We see both adrenal glands, and they look fairly normal. No obvious masses of the adrenal gland are identified. Uh, here again is the pancreas. Here's the pancreatic neck. Here's the pancreatic head. Pancreatic head. Here is the common duct. And as we follow these structures inferiorly, we are in the retroperitoneum here. The retroperitoneum is where we find most of the duodenum. And if we look to a coronal series of images, we'll see the stomach here coursing out anteriorly. So this is stomach here on CT. And then as it crosses over the midline, uh, we first encounter the first portion of the duodenum where we see the duodenal bulb in some cases, but in this case it's collapsed, so it's, it's really very poorly seen, but it should be right here. And then we follow that downward from there, and that's the second portion of the duodenum. So you have the first portion of the, of the duodenum where the duodenal bulb is. You have the second portion of the duodenum, which is the descending portion. You have the third portion where it crosses over the midline toward the left. And then you have the fourth portion of the duodenum where it slopes upward. And at this point, we transition from the retroperitoneal du duodenum to the intraperitoneal duodenum. So this is, by definition, the end of duodenum and the beginning of jejunum. And then jejunum continues and... Uh, we see what appears to be normal appearing small bowel in the abdomen. No obvious small bowel or mesenteric abnormalities. We can see very nicely the terminal ileum coming in here to join the cecum at the ileocecal valve. And we see a little hint of the appendix here on this coronal series of images. Go back to the axial images. No retroperitoneal masses. Here we have the duodenum. Let's look at the stomach first. The stomach crosses over the midline. The duodenal bulb is in the first portion of the duodenum. And then the second portion of the duodenum courses inferiorly from there. The third portion crosses the midline, the third portion of the duodenum. And then you have this ascending, obliquely oriented segment, the fourth portion of the duodenum that is immediately proximal to the, je the jejunum. And the jejunum we can see coursing throughout the uh, mesentery in portions of the abdomen on the left and uh, somewhere along the line transitioning to the ileum more distally. And 
once again, here we can see that terminal ileum coming into the right colon at the ileocecal valve, and again, our home base uh, marker here, the appendix, confirming that this is that anatomy that we think, the cecum. No free fluid in the pelvis. So, a fairly dramatic example of a gastrointestinal carcinoma, in this case, an esophageal carcinoma, producing extensive cannonball metastases throughout the substance of the liver.